Well, I've kind of got a, a multitasking session this morning, so I'm, I, I want to first of all welcome you uh, and also maybe give you a bit of an overview as to what ISD is and what our approach is towards that dreaded S word, sustainability. Now, it's fitting to note that we're in a, a recycled building, so that's our first claim, okay? We've taken a building, uh, anybody who reads the Evening Post or the Western Mail will have seen uh, little stories about the massive increase in cost. Uh, the reality is, what we've done is, is midway through the project, is decided to go for the gold standard and turn this building into a, a really exciting public space. So, so yes, we have spent a little bit more than we originally planned, but places like the reading room and the atrium, the stable facilities we've got here, are testimony to that money well spent. And uh, uh, part of the, the challenge of this building was to take a building which was created to house a library, um, a gallery, a school of science and art, um, which had gone way past its sell-by date, and reinvented for the 21st century. And I hopefully by the end of today, you'll agree with me that we've done a pretty good job. Um, place is now full of students. Uh, we have a number of schools based in here. Uh, we have a commercial centre based here. We have a European projects based here. We have a, a charitable research centre based here. It's a very exciting, dynamic space. And one of the keys to the space and the success of the space is this round reading room. Um, we're very proud of it. Um, those of you who are avid Doctor Who fans will, may recognise it from Silence in the Library. And for a small fee, I will bring the DVD in after lunch and you can, uh, uh, you can watch that. Um, but also Sherlock with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch uh, has been filmed in here. Um, in fact, enemy sitting in that seat over there, you, you better watch your backs because that's where the uh, Chinese uh, uh, ceramics expert was murdered in episode three of the first series. Um, but we've also had, had other things in here. We've had uh, classical performances in here. And even tonight, those of you who are coming to the uh, awards ceremony tonight, uh, it's going to be great to have uh, representatives from the Wales International Academy of the Voice performing here uh, for us uh, over dinner this evening. So it's a great venue, great space, but what I think is exciting about this fact is we've actually brought a wonderful old building back into full use. And uh, to me, in many ways, that's, that's kind of part of the sustainability agenda. It's not just about doing new things better, it's about what do we do with, with the legacy buildings? Rather than just knocking them down, how can we reuse them? But ISD is not necessarily about buildings, it's actually a, a knowledge transfer centre, uh, part funded by uh, European money. Um, it's a partnership uh, specifically between two universities, the University of Wales, Trinity St David and Cardiff Metropolitan University. And uh, we've been running now for three and a half years. We're coming to the end of the formal European funded stage and now looking to develop our plans to move the project forward into a post-funded model. Uh, to get this far, as uh, take the still from the uh, Doctor Who episode, um, it's been about teamwork. And, uh, but then anything that is sustainable, anything that's uh, long-lasting, has to be built upon teamwork. I mentioned the two uh, primary university partners, but we've also got other partners uh, from within the university here. Uh, Zurich is a key player. Um, we've also got, I see Joe there from, uh, from Bangor. Um, uh, it was almost a chance meeting at a, at a KESS event which has cemented a relationship that we've now got with Bangor University in terms of uh, a sustainability agenda, uh, taking on board their sustainability uh, diagnostic tool and using that as part of the IST project. Not only has it meant that we had access to an established and an efficient online diagnostic, but also meant that we didn't have to waste resources on duplication and creating an alternative. So that's been very successful. And uh, we've also had a very successful collaboration with a private partner, uh, NT CADCAM, who supp supplied uh, all our uh, CAD and hardware systems here. Um, but sustainability, we all go back to this uh, mantra. Sustainability, sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present that compromise the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Fine words, uh, but sometimes, I don't know about you, but we can feel a bit weary and browbeaten. And uh, we go through swings and roundabouts, chasing after the latest green initiative. Uh, a bit like yo-yo dieters, you know, going after one, then coming off it, going after another, coming off it, but all the time growing fat on excess consumption. Um, as, a, as a 
project and as a program, particularly uh, the team here, we've we, we looked at three kind of key areas for ourselves. One is the, uh, the, the, uh, the initial common features uh, document, the Brundtland Report, uh, we're inspired by uh, the writings of Tony Fry and defuturing and the idea that uh, th the future as we perhaps perceive it is, is only a product of our past and how can we reinvent our futures and redirect our practice. And then uh, the blue economy by uh, Gunther Pauli, which I know other colleagues here uh, are very, well, very much into, uh, especially I think I've seen Owen somewhere, I know Owen's a great exponent of, of uh, Gunther Pauli. And uh, so the idea of identifying what's best practice in the past and how can we adopt that and embed that within our processes. Um, you know, go back to the early 70s with John Lyle and the idea of the circular economy. Now, various methods and models have been developed and recycled over the years, but what we're left with is often confusion, frustrated people, and consumers who don't know what to buy and where to buy it and, and what choices to make. And what we need, we believe as an ISD, is to, is to enlist the support of those consumers by changing hearts and minds. Not browbeating or preaching to people, but changing hearts and minds through good design. Uh, I know our colleagues in, in, in Cardiff uh, through Design Wales and uh, PDR there share this philo philosophy of embedding good design practice. Sustainable design is good design. The two terms are interchangeable. And uh, we feel that we're at a turning point in history. And whatever your viewpoint is on the um, uh, underpinnings of global warming, it's a clear fact that the world is getting, a, getting warmer. Some days you'd wish it'd be a little bit warmer. But, uh, and it can be quite a daunting thought. What do we do? How do we, it's such a, a vast challenge ahead of us. And sometimes, like this, we can feel very much out of our depth. But I think uh, one of the key things is actually to maybe look back in time a little bit. I love this quote by William Morris, the uh, 19th century um, social uh, reformer, designer, artist. Have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. I mean, if we adopted that as a mantra, then we wouldn't buy a lot of the tat that we currently fill our lives with, and we'd buy things which would last. Instead, we've exchanged that for the idea of instant gratification, mass consumption, and we've all seen the pictures of Black Friday. Um, not very edifying for us as a nation. And what's the consequences? Well, the consequences are plain to see. Just search the web and you can find thousands of images which show the consequences of our, of our buy today, throw away tomorrow society. But then there's a dilemma because design is about creating attractive products. It's about eliciting consumer demand. But can we do that in a better way? That's the challenge. And hopefully the challenge today is that we start to consider ways in which we can change our minds, change our practices, reconsider the way we approach our world and the way that we confront the needs of our world. Well, we can go back to the 40s with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, and uh, we're still kind of aspiring to these things to, to build upon our basic needs with, and as we get wealthier and, and more comfortable, we, we, we ultimately seek this idea of esteem and self-actualization. But that's the very force that is driving consumerism today. It's the very force that says that, you know, you can be better tomorrow, you can have more, you can have bigger. Maybe we need to replace that. If we're going to stop our world falling apart, maybe we need to, yes, we still need to meet our biological needs, our physical needs. We need shelter, we need food. Uh, we need safety, we need to be protected. But maybe we need to replace the rest by some form of socially esteemed sustainability, where we get our so social status from the way we care for the planet, the way we care for each other, rather than what we consume. And design has a place to pay in that. Uh, I love this quote by Buckminster Fuller, quoted by Papenek. You have to make up your mind either to make sense or to make money if you want to be a designer. Those are harsh words, and maybe you can have a bit of both. But the challenge is we've got to start thinking, thinking more clearly about the actions that we undertake and the consequences of those actions. Uh, ISD has worked for the last three years to try and address some of those needs. We haven't got it all right by any means. We've done our best. Um, we've worked to... Uh, encourage an economically and environmentally and socially sustainable form of design. Uh, we've worked with companies in the area, many present here today, uh, to develop research and innovation within their organisations to help bolster their own R&I infrastructure. 
Uh, we've worked on collaborative R&Ds to help companies see a new idea to the marketplace. And we've been very successful in helping graduates to spin out, building upon the great work of colleagues such as Andy uh, with the International Institute for Creative Enterprise in generating new business startups from our university. And it's backed by the Vice Chancellor. If he were here this morning, uh, these would be some of his words. The University of Wales, Trinity St David, is committed to driving growth in Wales through the impact of its research and development activities and its active engagement with industry, employers and entrepreneurs. And how does that manifest itself? Well, um, in the recent REF outputs, this is the table of our results, but I'll, I'll skip to the headlines, which are more interesting. Uh, in partnership with our colleagues through WIRAD, the Wales Institute for Research and Art and Design, uh, which primarily involves Cardiff Metropolitan and the University of South Wales and ourselves, uh, we were joint first in the UK for the impact of our research in art and design. Joint first in the UK for the research environment that we've created. And if you strip out, the, um, if you just focus on, on our results which are world leading or internationally excellent, that gives us a 75% score, which puts us in 14th place across the, U across, across the UK in our category, which is UO UOA 34. And if you take out those universities which only talk about art history <coughs> rather than actually do design, then that puts us 14th in the UK. So we're, we're doing really well as a, as a consortium, as, a, as an institute across South Wales. And um, one of my colleagues from Cardiff, uh, uh, Steve Gill, has done some analysis and he identified the fact that uh, our results as a, as a consortium in Wales put us equal with Loughborough and Oxford University, only one rank below the Royal College of Art and above Glasgow, Dundee, Brighton, Leeds, Brunel, Bristol and Glasgow School of Art. So it's a good position to be in, but it's a position which has been hard won, uh, probably in, in the institutions over 10 to 15 years of hard work in the area of research, innovation and above all, I think, sustainable development. So, um, that's manifest here in Swansea by investment in infrastructure. This building is a part product of that, which means we've been able to take an old building with all its foibles, all its problems, and go some way to making it a sustainable bu building. This is, this is up on the roof, where we've embedded green roof technology, uh, PVs and so on, and actually introduced m more natural light into the spaces to, to lessen the need for artificial light, which means we've got gr bright and airy studios all part of trying to live out the philosophy within the day-to-day -day job. And that's bearing fruit in terms of the collaborations we've had with companies. Now, within the ISD remit, we're, we're restricted to working with companies within Convergence Wales. But outside of that, we work with companies from across the UK and uh, as, well as, as well as internationally. So that's the kind of overview. As a university, uh, we're driving ahead with a, a, a dramatic new future. Uh, many of you would have seen the press, uh, the, the plans for uh, uh, 200 million plus new campus in SA1, uh, taking over uh, the area around the South Dock in the Maritime Quarter in Swansea, sorry, the Prince of Wales Dock in, in Swansea. Exciting future for the university. In terms of art and art and design, we're staying here as the key anchor tenant, as it were, of the arts quarter between Deneva between Alex and across the road, the BBC building, uh, cementing our relationship as being the heart of the artistic and cultural capital of Swansea. It's an exciting future, and we've got an exciting day ahead of us. And so I think that's more than enough for me. So I'm going to invite my colleague, uh, um, Dr. Carlin Hales, to come up. And we may have to do a little shift now. <laughs>